now we are going to learn about confidence interval estimation so first case is first when sigma is known to us so let us write the code for that so let me just add a comment that sigma is known in that case what will be the confidence interval for the population mean so first of all we are going to import numpy as np and from scipy dot stats we are going to import norm because we are going to work with the normal distribution so as you know that numpy we have been using numpy for scientific computing and or for all your numerical operations and the norm module we are importing from your scipy library in order to work with the normal distribution next we would set the random seed to 0 so np dot random seed to 0 it specifies that the same random numbers would be generated each time the code is run it won't change at each run and let us consider the true population pro parameters true population parameters as so let us take the true mu as 5 and true sigma so we have taken the same parameters earlier also for point estimation so we are sticking to that same thing next we are going to generate a random sample generate a random sample from a normal distribution so in this case this, let us assume that the sample size of 100 would be taken and your variable data sample would store a sample that is generated from the normal distribution so we would write np dot random dot normal and in bracket we would write true underscore mu true underscore sigma and size would be the sample size so we have used this earlier also so let me just explain it once again so here it basically this is a function that generates random numbers from your normal distribution this true mu and true sigma basically represents the true population mean and this is the true population standard deviation of the normal distribution from which you, we want to take a sample and this is the sample size that is the number of random numbers we want to generate for your sample so basically by performing this it will generate a sample of size 100 or you could say that a sample it will generate a sam 100 random numbers from a normal distribution with mean 5 and variance 4 and it would be stored in your variable data underscore sample now we would calculate the sample mean because in population uh, if you recall your confidence intervals are built around your point estimator so for mu when sigma is known un is known in that case x bar is your point estimator so in this case also first we would calculate the sample mean which comes out using the np dot mean function so data underscore sample okay now we need to set the confidence level so let the confidence level be 0.95 as you know this is the most common one and we have explained discussed the reason for this being the most common one after confidence level we will calculate the critical z values so let me write the comment calculate the critical z values so for this let alpha be 1 minus of confidence level and your z critical would be nor dot ppf 1 minus 
alpha by 2. So basically what we are doing over here is, here we are calculating the critical values for a two-tailed test. So this alpha basically represents the significance level, which is the probability of making type 1 error, that is rejecting a true null hypothesis. And z critical is calculated using the percent point function, that is norm dot ppf. This is the percent point function from the normal distribution. Okay, so it corresponds to the z value at which 1 minus alpha by 2 percent of the data falls on each tail of the distribution. 1 minus alpha by 2 on each side. And then after this, we can calculate your margin of error. Let me just write calculate the margin of error. So, margin of error, as you remember, so I can just write margin m o e i can write okay so margin of error so this is z critical into true sigma so which is sigma divided by square root of n so we need to write np dot square root of the sample size sample size we have already defined earlier Okay, so here we have calculated the margin of error. Margin of error basically is a measure of the uncertainty in the sample mean. So here we are calculating it by multiplying the critical z value by the standard error of the sample mean. So in this case, the standard error is given by true sigma divided by sigma by root n basically. Now once this is calculated, we can cal write the confidence interval calculate confidence interval for mu. So, this one would be, so just me just write C i would be, so sample mean minus M O E minus of margin minus, you subtract the margin of error and on the other side, you would add the margin of error. Now you can finally print. So let us first print what was your true population parameter. Or you can write true population mean. So in this case, it would be true mu. Next would be your sample mean because we should see what is the point estimator also in this case and also because your confidence it would be easier to see how your confidence intervals are built around your sample means and finally we would print your confidence interval ci for mu so here this value would be c i. So true population mean was 5, sample mean came out as 5.11 and the confidence interval that we have obtained varies from 4.727 to 5.116. So you can see that your confidence interval for mu is centered around your sample mean and population mean is in fact within that only. So you have come up with an interval estimate for your population mean, which is a good estimator in this case as it can be seen. So what we have done primarily over here is that we have imported the necessary libraries and then we have defined and set the true population parameters and generated a random sample from normal distribution with the specified mean and variance. We have calculated the sample mean and then we have specified the confidence level. After that, we have calculated the z values, margin of error and then finally, we have been able to calculate the confidence interval. Now, the next thing could be, let us see how this thing confidence interval varies with by changing the parameters.
okay so let me just write varying parameters so we import numpy as np from scipy dot stats import nor we need this and we also need from matplotlib import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt so this one we have used early these two we have used earlier also this matplotlib this is used for your visualizing the different plots and charts okay so for that purpose we are writing it over here now the true population parameters we can take them as same as we have already defined them over here so mean 5 and variance will be 4 now let us see what are the varying sample sizes sample sizes so let us define so in the previous one we fixed the sample size as 100 and in this case let us use this function np dot arrange 10 201 and 10 so this shows basically that this is a numpy array that represents a range of sample sizes so now it will start from 10 and it will increase by 10 and go up till 200 because 201 and as you can recall it takes python takes one value less than the final argument that we give so it will go up till 200 and that is why we have written 201 okay so it means that you are interested in studying the confidence how confidence intervals change as the sample size varies so we can write confidence levels also so we want to see at different confidence levels so 0 0.90 0 0.95 and 0.99 now we will create a list to store the length of confidence interval for different sample sizes and confidence levels so let me just write interval underscore lens as empty over here so this line initializes an empty list called interval lens so it is meant to store the length of confidence interval for different combinations of sample sizes and confidence intervals so now we will see what happens next so we are going to initiate a for loop for confidence level in confidence underscore levels so we will create this empty list length is empty it will store the length of the confidence interval for each sample size at the current confidence level so first of all it will initiate a for loop over here so it will pick a particular confidence level and then here in this place it would store the length of the current confidence level that has been picked next we write for sample in sample sizes data underscore sample so from here we are going to generate random variables from random numbers from your normal distribution with the mean true mu mean 5 variance would be your true sigma or you can say standard deviation in this case and your sample size size is the sample size then it would calculate the sample mean using the numpy dot mean function one minus alpha will be one minus of the confidence level 
and z critical would be norm we have used earlier also ppf norm dot ppf so this one would be 1 minus alpha by 2 so we are this is your percent point function of the norm this normal distribution hmm. so basically we have iterated a for loop over here over the sample sizes different samples in the sample sizes and for each of them for each sample size it generates a random sample that is this and it calculates the sample mean it will calculate the value of alpha and z critical value after this it would calculate the margin of error also so let me just write moe here margin of error would be z critical into sigma by root n so true sigma divided by np dot sqrt sample size next we would calculate the confidence ci length ci underscore length so it would be twice of the margin of error moe so length of the confidence interval would be sum up twice of the margin of error we have discussed these topics in class also and now we are going to finally append it lens dot append ci underscore length so here basically it is your confidence interval length is determined by doubling the margin of error as it is symmetric around the sample mean and then this length for the current sample sizes would be appended to the lengths list and this length would be finally appended to this interval lens that we have calculated over here so it would be shifted a bit this side so interval lens dot append lengths so the length list for this particular confidence level that you have obtained over here it would be appended to the final list sorry so here i have defined length lengths let me write lengths so here it would be interval lengths so probably i can just write here also so finally we are going to create a plot to visualize this so first of all we would write plot dot figure fix size let us take as 10 comma 6 okay so this would basically create a new figure for the plot and size 10 inches in width and 6 inches in height then for i in confidence level for i confidence level in enumerate confidence so for i confidence level in your confidence levels that we have already taken over here for this for loop over here it will iterate over different confidence levels and it will plot so let me just write the command first plt dot plot so we need an x-axis for this so in x-axis we will write the sample sizes sample sizes and for the y-axis we need interval lengths interval underscore lens i for the current confidence level and it would be labeled as confidence level okay 
what confidence level is there so let us see what it is so first this will be evaluated and then finally it would be printed so x axis this is y and this would be the label for your plot after this loop is completed then finally it would print the x label so let us write x label as sample sizes and y label can be your ci length confidence interval length plt dot legend let us have that empty you can also name this title so this is confidence interval length versus sample size if you want the grid we can write that also so we have used these commands earlier also so i am not going in detail because here finally we are going to display okay so here i have written the entire code in one step over here one input line so after this if i run it so what i'm getting is in this way so you can see that for different sample sizes as the sample size is varying your confidence interval length also you can say it is varying for confidence level 0.99 that is it is green in color so it starts from 3 over here and it decreases up till 1 when you are increasing the sample size likewise for blue you can see for 0.95 it is in between these two starts from somewhere around 2.5 till and it decreases till somewhere around 0.75 or 0.6 here so you see that how by varying the sample sizes different confidence intervals or your the length of the confidence interval also can vary